Hey, what's up YouTube? Alien Rides here. Today we're taking a look at the latest offering from InMotion, the InMotion L9 electric scooter. So this scooter is currently being crowdfunded at Indiegogo, and I'll have a link to it in the video description below, so definitely check that out. Now the crazy thing about this scooter is that they're stating this scooter has a range of 50 miles. That's totally crazy. So we're definitely going to do a range test. I don't know if I have enough time to do the range test for this review video, but we're definitely going to do it in the future. So for now, we're just going to go on a ride, and I'll tell you about some of the features and how the scooter feels. Subscribe and let's ride. In motion of sport. That's pretty cool. And it comes with all the tools I need to assemble those front handlebars. So that makes it pretty easy. All right guys, at first glance, this thing just looks pretty beefy. It's got this nice front fork suspension. Rear suspension as well. Feels pretty hefty. Should be a pretty sweet ride. All right, I'm gonna charge it up and we'll take it out on a ride. Now let's first dive into the features of the InMotion L9. Then we'll get into some of the specifications, ride footage, and a hill climb test later. Starting with the handlebars, you've got a standard, solid handlebar with grips at each end. There's a single brake lever on the left with a bell and a thumb throttle on the right. The center dashboard is pretty large and looks really cool. I love what they've done here with the display. It's sleek, easy to understand, and provides everything you need to know. The single button toggles between different riding modes and turns on and off the front headlight. There's also side and rear lighting as well, along with automatic turn signals at the bottom of the scooter when you lean to one side. It's a really cool feature, but it's a little low to the ground, so I don't think cars would be able to see them. The folding mechanism is pretty nice, and it's one of the better implementations that I've seen. A simple latch pulls down, the stem folds, and it locks to the back of the scooter so you can easily pick it up if needed. Even with this folding mechanism, the stem feels solid with very little play. The scooter rocks a really nice front and rear suspension actually. It's one of the best I've felt on a commuter scooter. Oftentimes when going over a bump, I would brace for it, then be very surprised as I felt nothing. Here's some footage of a little dirt path that I rode on with the L9, and it did a great job handling it. The large 10-inch tubeless tires also contribute to the smoothness of the ride. Normally flats are a concern with these air-filled tires on commuter scooters, but I think that the larger 10-inch tires here might help quite a bit with that. The deck is fairly large and super comfortable for me to ride. It's also covered with a nice rubber surface, and I don't think you're going to be slipping on this deck at all. They're also going to have an additional seat attachment available, and that's pretty cool because not many commuter scooters have that available. You've got two charge ports so you can charge fairly quickly if needed, though this review unit only came with a single charger. I think you have to pay for the additional charger. So now, let's get into the specs. It rocks pretty standard specs for a commuter with a 500 watt motor and 1000 watts peak. This was enough to propel me to the stated top speed of 30 kilometers or 18.6 miles per hour fairly easily. I did feel like the scooter had more power in it though, so maybe it's possible to hack it or unlimit the power somehow. The electronics within the scooter are really great. There's all sorts of features to ensure the longevity and safety of your scooter. There's protection for things like over discharge, short circuits, overcharge, battery equalization, and temperature protection. I actually experienced some of this later on, so stay tuned to see what happens. The battery itself is a 675 watt hour battery with 63 volts of peak power. The 63 volt figure is a bit interesting for me because that's a bit of a high number for a typical commuter scooter. The included charger will charge it at 1.8 amps and charge in 7.2 hours, or half of that if you use two charges together. Now where it gets interesting is the range. The factory stated range is about 59 miles. That's a huge number for a commuter scooter. Now most every advertised number is a bit less in real world conditions with heavier riders. I usually cut those numbers in half, and I'll plan on doing some range tests with the scooter myself in the future. I just didn't have time to do those range tests for this review video. I asked InMotion for how they got their range figures, and this is the answer that I received. 
They were riding at a constant speed of 10 miles per hour on smooth pavement with a 75 kilogram or 165 pound rider at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit with a fully charged battery. So obviously that's a pretty stringent set of requirements and we're definitely going to put that to the test in a future video. Let's get to the braking. The single mechanical brake, along with electronic braking, did a fantastic job at slowing and stopping the scooter on the super steep hills of San Francisco. You'll see some footage in a little bit of a hill contest that we did, and the scooter had no problem stopping on the descent. Finally, about the weight of the scooter, it's not super light like other commuter options, but given the feature set and slightly larger battery, it's a fairly reasonable package. It definitely feels like it's built fairly solid with high quality components. It's going to weigh about 24 kilograms or 52 pounds. As for things which might be improved, my main desires would be a slightly higher top speed as well as an adjustable stem height. I did find the handlebars to be a bit taller than I prefer, and I'm right at the six foot tall mark. So overall, I think that the scooter provides pretty good value for what you get. Like I said earlier, it's currently being crowdfunded on Indiegogo, and so far they've seen huge success. Nearly $300,000 raised right now, and they've extended the campaign a bit. Normally I'm hesitant about buying electronics on crowdfunding sites, but I have the prototype in hand, it works, and Emotion is a great company. This is one of the few companies that I'd back on a crowdfunding site. It's also available for a really low price of $549 shipped. This price is frankly really low for the package that you get. The warranty also seems decent. You have one year on the scooter body and six months on the battery. For parts, you'll get them free of charge, shipped directly from the factory or a local dealer. In the crowdfunding campaign, they mainly compared the scooter to the well-known Ninebot Max and Xiaomi M365. Those are both excellent commuter scooters, but I gotta say, the InMotion L9 blows them away with both the specs and the price point. Now, let's get into our hill climb test. All right guys, so we're gonna do our hill climb test now. And I've actually moved recently, so I'm not near California shoot where I normally test the scooters out. But I found a pretty sizable hill here near my house. Overall, the first few sections look pretty easy. But then near the top is about a 20% grade or so, I think. So let's see if the scooter can make it up the hill. All right guys, let's begin our hill climb test. We are cruising up Alabama Street now. This first section is pretty simple. This goes all the way up to the top of Bernal Heights, I think. And we are on to the next section. We're slowing down a little bit, but we're still going about 10, 11 miles per hour up this hill. So pretty good. This next part though, this is looking pretty steep. Let's see if we can make it. We are slowing down considerably. Ugh. And that's all we got, but that's not bad at all. We made it all the way from the bottom of the hill to uh, here or so. And most of the houses end about here, so this is probably pretty good if you live anywhere below this part of the hill. So not bad. Well guys, we were just continuing up our hill very slowly. I was kind of kicking a little bit, and we got to here. And this red light came on, and the speed is flashing. And the throttle doesn't do anything, so I think I broke the scooter. Made it pretty far up this hill and then it just died on me. So let me try to turn it off. Turn it on again. Still got the same error. I guess I'm screwed. I'm pretty far from home. Maybe I'll see if I can Uber back. I guess it's gonna cut this video short. So check this out. The LED is flashing. This red light is here now. So actually guys, the red light just disappeared. So I don't know what that means. I thought maybe a controller exploded but it turns out it just overheated. So that's pretty cool actually. If it can just overheat and not like totally blow up the controller, that's a good thing. So I didn't know what it meant. Turns out it's totally fine. The scooter goes. So now you kind of know a little bit about the capabilities. If you push it too hard, it's gonna overheat, but that's not too bad. 
I've had a lot of scooters that when you push it that hard, they just totally break and fail and then you're stuck with a heavy paperweight. Okay guys, and with that, I'm gonna head on home now watching those steep hills. This thing still though is a pretty awesome commuter solution. So definitely check out their Indiegogo. I've linked to it in the video description. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all next time.